Hey folks, last week we opened up the scriptures to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, talking about three manifestations of worldliness, each with all their own subtopics. And we want to learn to address this scripture in the context of homeschooling. How can we teach our kids to avoid some of the traps of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life? Uh, Again, last week we talked about sexuality because most people put lust with sexuality, though there's many more manifestations than just that. And the challenge last week was not to be too late to the party. Uh, Some parents not wanting to awaken love before it's time wait too long and their kids have learned a lot of these definitions from their peers or from the internet and they're already practicing them in a perverse and unbiblical way. So we can't be too late to the party. But that is just one manifestation of lust. I love the ESV's treatment of the word lust because it oftentimes uses the word sensual or sensuality in place thereof. And I like that so much better because, first of all, it's a, it's a lot broader and it really uh, connects the word to the, the theory or the principle. We want to feel good. It makes our senses feel good. We are satisfied by these different uh, stimuli. And we have got to understand that the most important lessons in life, they're not taught, they're caught by our daily lifestyle. And folks, that should scare us to death as parents. When I think about my own character flaws and my own personality idiosyncrasies, and to know that my kids are assimilating both the good and the bad, it causes me to fall up on my face before God and say, God, give me grace to rise above these areas. And so I, what I want to do today is just give you three more manifestations of the lust of the flesh that we parents can first look at our own lives and say, hey, are we guilty of these before we start talking to our kids about these things in their life? And these are in no certain order, but what about sleep? What is our attitude towards sleep? Proverbs says a little slumber, a little like folding the hand to rest, and poverty comes rushing in. And how easy it is as parents, because we're tired uh, to sleep in the morning, and maybe we rush through devotions if we have them at all, or we tend to stay up late at night because our kids are finally down, we want some me time, and we spend most of that time surfing the web or watching TV rather than reading books or the Bible, something that would give us uh, increased character in our daily life. So what is our attitude towards sleep? Also, what is our attitude towards eating? You know, the Bible says quite a bit about gluttony. And it's just not how much we eat, it's what kind of foods we eat. You know, honey, don't eat too much honey because it will make you vomit. Too much sugar is not good for us. And I got to tell you, that's a struggle for me at 60. Because when I was younger, I used to hate to stop to eat. But now that I'm my age, I like to eat, and I like to eat my sugar, and I like to eat my donuts. And it's easy to start to live to eat rather than eat to live. Always having some snacks close by, good or bad, always popping something in our mouths. And folks, our kids are watching this all the time. And we know that child obesity is a big problem. But a lot of times they learn that from us parents by our habits as well. And finally, there's just the thought of wanting to feel good all the time. Again, the idea of sensuality. The older I get, the more I like to be warm in the winter and cool in the summer. That's why I've been doing some of the take fives here in front of my stove. This is where I work at in the wintertime. I have a ping pong table in front of me. And it just feels warm here. Teddy Roosevelt said to seek for the strenuous life. Because the life of ease just takes us a spiral all the way down. We get a, want more ease in this area, and that breeds more ease in this area. And after a while, we become somebody that we never knew. So, as we think about the lust of the flesh, we're going to add, again, some more things on next week. But what about us parents? Do we eat to live or do we live to eat? Is sleep too high of a priority for us? And just just what about our general creature comforts? Is that all we think about, about being comfortable all the time rather than being where God wants us to be on the stretch, on the move for his will and for his work? Hope this makes sense. Hope this causes some good conversation in your devotional time. And until then, this is Kirk Smith with ICHEs. Take five.